What's up, everybody? It's your man's KJ the Great dropping another edition of All Sports Media TV, and I got a special guest in the building. I'm gonna let him introduce you and introduce himself to y'all. My name is Elijah Pig, aka Hakeem Elijahwan. How you doing, man? Good. I'm good. I'm good. Bring it. Uh, bring the uh, mic a little. Let me bring that a little closer to you. Yeah, yeah. All right, there we go. All right, so man, quick post fight reaction. Uh, what did we just witness, man? We seen Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Pandora. It was a bloody, bloody, bloody fight. Um, was that Tim Zhu had a gash over his head in the second round? Yeah, and Pandora had a broke nose pretty much the entire fight. Pretty much, yeah. And at one point, I thought they were gonna stop the fight, um, due to the uh, gash on Tim Zhu's head. But the referee, the ring doctor, they let him keep going. And this is what you want to see uh, in boxing. It's two warriors going at it, letting it all out on the line, and definitely um, not holding nothing back. What do you think about the fight? Man, I was I was actually impressed um, with the, the ability for Sebastian Fundor to, to keep that jab in Tim Zhu's face. Yeah. And, and to... And for Tim Zhu to have to fight through so much adversity and to make it through to the very end of the fight, he didn't come out with the victory, but I, I still throw my hats off to him because yeah. he did a good job. Yeah, definitely. I think they need to run that back, man. Yeah, they need to run it back. For sure. And it, it, it'll probably come, what is this, uh, about to be April. So we give them four, five, six months. I think they'll run it back at some point this year. Mm -hmm. um, but for y'all that don't know, my man's here. He's a boxer. Switching from amateur to pro real soon. Go ahead. Uh, so as as I always ask people when I do these interviews is how did you get into boxing? And at what point did you realize boxing was something that was for, for you and you could do it? Honestly, my little brother was a boxer and he was boxing maybe six months, something like that. And, uh, you know, he's very talented. and I would just wanted to be the guy that gave, set a good example for him. You know what I mean? Because prior to that, I wasn't a great example for my little brother. But I always knew that he had the passion to be a boxer. So I decided to step into the ring, just telling him at first. Well, honestly, he came and he started beating me up a little bit. <laughs> and I wasn't liking that as big bro. I was like, man, this is unacceptable. Can't have that. So I started going to the gym and I was like, well, I'm going to be your sparring partner and make sure he keeps his head on straight. And uh, whenever I got there, all the all the coaches and the other fighters noticed that I had the ability to also maintain myself in the ring. So yeah. I just kept going back. You know what I mean? And that's really what it turned out to be was just my dedicate. My my consistency was was there. You know what I mean? And yeah. Over time, I built a dedication to the craft and yeah. found myself where I'm at now. Yeah, so kind of found it like, you know, just navigating, trying to be, you know, yourself and better each day type of deal. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up, man. And and that's what we need out of more and more people for the generations to come. So as far as um on the amateur scene, what what would you say was the toughest thing? um going into fights you know because you, you like we talked we talked about it a little bit before about the weight cuts or you know stuff like that what would you say was tough going into the fights how to how in 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 your preparation well for me personally it was a lot about bad habits that i had picked up before i became a boxer oh. um so i was going in and you know maybe i get hit and i want to get it back so bad it was just like learning how to control my emotions yeah going into the fight see you you have less adversity in sparring or whatever you say and you get to these fights and you have these people watching you and you have to learn how to adapt emotionally right and um that that played a big role in my some of my first fights i would get tired early in the fight because i'm emotionally charged or you know just just not fully prepared as you think you are when you go into these fights. You just got to keep pushing yourself and, and training and get better after your fights and, and really look back and see what you didn't do right, Okay. what you did do right, and be open to the criticism that comes with yeah. the mistakes you make. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
So when you won your first fight, what was that feeling? And then after, what was that? Like, you in the ring, you win your first fight, you get your hand raised. What were you feeling in that moment? And then right, you know, like, say the next day, what was what was you thinking back, looking back, thinking on looking back at it? Man, in my first fight, I was I had a feeling of relief. You know what I mean? Like, I was extremely excited and 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 thankful that I got the victory. But at the same time, it was like a, a level of relief because of similar situation. Like what I was just speaking on was just yeah. like being emotionally charged and feeling like I had to get the win so bad that I tired myself out. You know what I mean? I wore myself out. And in the third round, it was like a desperation round. You know what I mean? Just yeah. trying to make sure that I could stay on my two feet. And uh, so whenever I went into my first fight, I didn't understand the level of fatigue that you can can happen to you in a fight. I didn't understand. There's so many things you don't understand. You don't understand how the crowd's going to affect you, all these different things. So it was a level of relief. But going into the next day, looking back at it, and I actually watched the fight and I played the fight back, I put too much pressure on myself yeah. in the fight. You know what I mean? I get hit one time and I feel like, Oh my God, it's the Gotta closest fight back. ever. <laughs> yeah. It's the closest fight ever. He's hitting me and I'm, I hit him, but I know he's hitting me. So it felt like uh, the fight was closer than it was. But looking back the next day, I was just like, I need to take some of this pressure off myself and stop being so emotionally involved and, and use my brain more. Yep. 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 I can, man, I, I like we talked before, you know, when I did box, one of the one of the tougher things was to get out of my own way and, you know, not put so much pressure on myself. Absolutely. It was one of them things where, just like you said, you know, you just got to not react to the crowd, not focus on them, focus on what you do and what you do best. Take them out of their game. It, it sounds like it's a lot, but, you know, in the moment is one of them things where, you know, you controlling yourself and your emotions and all that. Exactly. So. As far as now, we just said it, you you turn in pro. As far as being a pro, what are you know some short term goals that you have at this moment right now? Short term goals. See, I'm still going pro, so the the short term goal is to go out there and get the victory. No. Um, but in training, it's been simply back to the basics for me it was like you develop all these skills and you take it to the amateurs and you use it but it's like all right well let's perfect and get everything yeah. crispy tighten it up and yeah let's tighten everything up so i just been tightening everything up and uh getting ready to unload what i got man april 6th make sure y'all come out yeah to the uh engine room yeah the engine room boxing in tulsa oklahoma oh yeah we're gonna be in there all sports media tv gonna be in there yes, for sir. show now for the people who who watch it right now who are let me see we won't do all time who are five fighters right now that you watch that either you you try to take from their style or you may say like okay i'm gonna try to emulate that style a little bit um sugar ray leonard Greatest. <laughs> One of the greatest. I'm watching Carmel Moden. Moden, yep. Uh, Shakur Stevenson. Um, let me see. Let me think. I watch a lot of James Tony. James Tony. Lights out. Lights out. And I also watch uh, Sugar Shane Mosley. Sugar Shane. Hey. A lot of sugar in there. Sugar, sugar Ray, sugar Shane, sugar yeah. Shakur, yeah. sweet hands. Oh, yeah. All that. All that. Man, that is definitely a hell of a list. And definitely um, Sugar Ray Leonard, he's one of my favorites to watch. You know, I I, I love the original uh, Four Kings, you know, Tommy yeah. Hearns and Hagler and Roberto Duran. Those guys, they were warriors, man. Absolutely. And, and I will say that Marvin Hagler is actually – my number one like oh yeah so I, that's who i rock with like in his when they talk about the history fight fighters in history i mess with marvin Hagler and sugar ray yeah marvin Hagler was one of those fighters he was a lunch pill hard nose mm -hmm. let's just get after it like it's, fighters. It's, the, it's the tenacity and the training that's that's what i gravitated to as well oh yeah hey he said it himself man it's hard to get up out of bed when you land on these silk sheets and <laughs> go run 
five miles or whatever you got to put in. Hey, but yeah, as far the same problems. Oh yeah, 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 man. Hey, that's that's what you know. You got to get there. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. So now, as far as um, you're coming off of the amateur scene, and I don't know if you had seen it, um, but the USA Boxing they recently made it okay or are allowing gonna allow transgenders competing in on the amateur scene what are your thoughts on that man i i i'm against that you know what i mean personally but um i mean you know some of these decisions come from these higher ups that have no real understanding of what it would take for right. a woman to compete against a man right. or for a man to go out there to compete what it would take that woman to actually have to put up with yeah to right compete with a man so it's like and that's yeah, what it's 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 a negative it's a negative direction. that's that's the question that i've been asking everybody since they made it official this year and you know they you hear it saying all the time you don't play boxing and, you know when they do the statistics on boxers that get hurt or die in the ring they always give you the male uh statistics mm -hmm. and I always tell people if 13 on average, 13 mailboxes either die or suffer some life changing injury in the ring. Why would you make it OK for them to fight women? You know, they say, you know, you got to be two years or four years post op, you know, the surgery and you got to be on hormones, this and that and that. But they're not requiring those men to have the same testosterone levels as the women. Um, they only got to be down to a certain level, which women naturally don't have a high, or, you know, uh, testosterone level like men. So that's where I say it's like that's dangerous, you know, because we've already seen it happen in MMA where uh, guys fighting a woman, transgender guys fighting a woman, and she's got to get reconstructive surgery on her face. Like we don't want to see that type of stuff. And obviously, we know that um, real men don't want to compete against real women, and real women don't want to compete against real men. Because they have respect yep. for the nature of it, yep. but uh, you know, beyond that, it's that's that's a personal thing for other people. Yeah, and I try not to talk, speak on it too much. Right. But in my personal opinion, is just go ahead and cut it, cut the bullshit, <laughs> and let's just uh do what we do and, and have respect for the sport. Like you said, it's it's a dangerous sport. We don't need to have people out here getting hurt try to prove that they're a part of something that they either are or aren't right. part of, you know. Yeah, that's that's uh that's one of them things, man. It's a touchy sub subject right now, but you know, that's why whenever I do a video or upload a video and it's a woman's video, I always say, you know, protect women's sports, keep women's sports, women's sports, keep men's sports, men's yeah. sports cuz you know, Absolutely. It's that simple. But at an all-star event, you know, out here, females hop on the court with it and stuff like that. That's that's all. Shoot the ball, you yeah, know. Let's play. You can play basketball. You can play football, yeah. but you can't play boxing. Yeah. It's that simple. Play boxing. Now, when uh, so like I said, April six, pro debut. Uh, going into this, you know, you you uh said you had a, a opponent that pulled out, right. and you got a new opponent now. How do you how do you adjust for that uh, mentally and it's at a different way, right? Right. So how do you adjust to that mentally and physically? Honestly, I just um, continue to do what I do, and I've I've had situations where I've had to fight at different weight classes before. Right. Um, it's not ideal. It's not something that I look forward to doing again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless it's just the, what the situation calls for, and it makes sense. But um, I'm just doing what I do, man. I'm not trying to focus too much on the next man's work. I'm just going to keep focusing on my hard work that I put in day for day, every day, you know, 25-8 with it. So yeah. I just put I just put all the um all the stock into believing that I put in the work. You know what I mean? You know when you put in the work, and I feel like I put in the work, so I'm ready to, ready to get in there. Bang. For sure, for sure. We're going to be in the building, man. I can't wait to see it myself, man. A lot of y'all don't know, Tulsa, Oklahoma has had a lot of boxers in the past, and we've got a lot of good boxers right now, currently, you know. Um, one of our uh, 
notable boxers right now. Uh, Jeremiah Dreamland Milton, he signed with uh, ESPN, you know, and even even for people that's making their debut, you know, they're on their way. So y'all get behind these guys, support these guys, support the grind. And and and, you know, uh, just just be there, you know, show up, you know, show support because we could be out here doing all kinds of whatever. But we want to be, like he said, examples, even for his brother, for the next generation moving forward. We want to see great things come up out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street, all that. We want to see it now. Yeah. Aside from that, aside from boxing. um, So. How do you balance it all? Like you're an artist, you're a boxer, you know, how do you find the balance with everything? You know, when you have uh, a goal in mind and you have other things on your plate, like with being a musician, um, I had to make a decision that I was going to pursue boxing full, full force. You know what I mean? So I put music on the back burner. Not that I've given up the trade because I feel like I've put in a lot of more hours in music than I have ever put in in boxing. So I could pick up my pen at any point right. and create. And I'm always in creation mode. So a lot of t- things is just in my head and it's just like, oh, oh yeah. you know, I just write yeah. it down and then uh, I put all my, but I put all my effort into 20, like I said, 25, eight, I wake up, go to work, get to the gym come home, run, do whatever I got to do. It's to life on, on point. You yeah. know what I mean? And I, and I make sure that I get to be on point and, uh, but I, I balance everything by just having faith and, you know, keeping, keeping, uh, keeping a level head in the situations. Whenever I feel, I don't let pressure of the music world get, get to me whenever I know I have other things on my mind. Right. And I, I, I feel like as a man, you, you you can outgrow some of your some of your passions. You know, what I'm saying you like not that you give up your passion, but I had the passion for music at a young age, and I was troubled, and it helped me release. You yeah. know what I mean? And now I'm in the boxing, and I put a lot of my effort and energy into that passion. Oh. Not that I don't have the passion for music anymore, but I just you know yeah. I'm moving on in my life at the same time. So. Hey, keeping this shit rocking. All good things. They, you know, they say that all good things come to an end. But what I get from it is, hey, I did this, but now I got tunnel vision because I got a goal right here. Got a goal. We got a goal set. That's what you got. That's what y'all got to focus on, man. Make sure y'all set your goals, tunnel vision, and go straight forward. Set your goals high. Yep. Don't limitate yourself. Oh yeah, reach for the stars, as they say. Yes, sir. But. I'm going to keep this interview real short and sweet for y'all. I want to let y'all know if you hadn't got your tickets yet, yeah. April 6th, I'm going to say it again. Make sure y'all come out to the engine room. We're going to see some great fights. Yeah, man. So aside from that, man, let everybody know where they can follow you, where they can find you. They want to reach out, grab some merch. If you got some merch, go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah, you can reach out to me on Instagram at Hakimi Lajuan. Um Elijah P, you type in my name, E L I J A H P I double G. And you're gonna find me, man. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. All you gotta do is look. We out here, man. Already, already. Make sure y'all follow the man. Make sure y'all support the man. That's how we make it. And for everybody else, remember, God and grind. As long as we keep God first when you grind it, nobody can ever stop your shine. Thank y'all for tuning Absolutely. in. We're going to be back here with another one real soon. Peace.